Accelerated by Compass is the premier accelerator program for Bitcoin mining sites at any stage of development. Our managed services provide expert guidance in site procurement, construction, energy agreements, and mining operations. Compass helps clients meet timelines and expectations for operational excellence from greenfield to retrofits and everything in between. Don't just mine, excel. Visit compassmining.io now to discover how Accelerated by Compass can power your success. Are you a retail or institutional investor interested in Bitcoin mining companies? The Miner Mag brings you free data and analysis from all major NASDAQ listed Bitcoin mining operations to know who stands out. Check out visualized metrics and data dependent stories at theminermag.com. Juana, welcome to the Mining Pod. Thank Long you for time having coming. me. Yeah. I know. Yeah, this is cool because we first talked about this project two or three years ago. I think we met up at Bitcoin Miami and for like two seconds. And I think either you're looking for like people to meet or sponsors for the project. Yes. And, and I was an interview and everything. Yeah. And I was at Compass and it was just like the beginning of the bear market. And we were just like, there had been a shuffle with Compass and then there was like no sponsors for anything. And I remember meeting you and be like, oh, I feel so bad because this is a really cool project. And I was doing or aspiring to do film stuff. And I was like, we just we have no money. So yeah, so that was like a weird introduction for it because I felt bad, but we just kept following along and now you've produced it and it's out the door. Well, it's it's very out cool. the door. It's yeah. done. Yeah. It was an interesting time to start it because yeah. it was high 60s. It was when it hit, I had already decided when it was in 50s and mm -hmm. it was like, you know, going to the moon mm -hmm. and then it started, you know, going down Yep. and it affected miners. You yeah. know, it affected everyone, but it affected miners probably more. Yep. Um, and it was a really hard time to suddenly start asking people for money for a mining documentary. And it's called Dirty Coin. Yeah. So people were like, uh, why am I going? No, no. For the record, out. I always liked the name. I remember you telling Thank me you. one time you were like thinking of changing it. And I was like, don't. I didn't say that. But. Some of my favorite people told me not to. Yeah. Like Troy, Troy sent me a, yeah. a lengthy message to not change the name. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you're from Portland. You get it. Yeah. You know, you know who I'm making this for. So, all right, Troy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I had a really hard time with the name because, you know, Dirty Coin. But it is the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. And the and for me, I mean, I remember having to hide the fact that I had any Bitcoin because mm -hmm. It was only in Silicon Valley. If you had Bitcoin, you were buying drugs on Silk Road, period. Were you? I wasn't. I, I wasn't. I feel like I missed the boat there. Yeah. And because I found out about uh, about Silk Road when they arrested Ross. Yeah. And then I was like, fuck. Well, I found out about Silk Road in, in the way of like how to do it, how it worked. You yeah. know, I did not know how to navigate the dark web okay. or anything like that. But I do regret it's it. It's a good denial. It's pretty solid. I believe you. <laughs> Um, but, and it's interesting because I met a lot of miners and that's how they started mining. They mm -hmm. were like, I could just plug my computer in at home and then I could get free drugs online. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, it's a great time. And then I couldn't get any of those interviews in the film because who wants to come, you know, be in the yeah. film and say, say that. But that was something that, um, came up a lot. And yeah, I mean, for me, I still believe that who defines what is clean and, mm -hmm. If you need to kind of, if Bitcoin needs to go through some kind of like checkpoint in order to be validated, mm -hmm. then it's not really Bitcoin anymore. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not what it is. So yeah. don't give me, I don't want the validated checkpoint, you know, green checks. Mm -hmm. I want Bitcoin. You want dirty coin. Give me the dirty ones. Yeah. Yeah. Not just the carbon dirty, but everything else. Exactly. Um, okay. Well, let's dive into your background, uh, which we've talked a lot about, but the audience obviously does not know much about it. And then I want to move towards like the motivation for making a full film like this. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I was a filmmaker in Silicon Valley, so I did a lot of work for different companies there. Um, I've had a production company now for 14 years. This mm -hmm. is my 14th year. And um, yeah, did a lot of work for PayPal, Amazon, um, different cloud companies. Back when people were like, nobody's ever going to use cloud. Cloud's mm. never going to take off. Nobody's ever going to trust leap putting your data on another server. And obviously, you know, here we are today. Yep. And um, eventually was hired by Google Cloud because I had all this cloud work. And 
I would say my, my forte was humanizing the tech, mm -hmm. you know, putting a human story behind the tech. People don't want to buy mm -hmm. an Apple watch. They want to buy being healthier. They want to buy the convenience of a timer or whatever. Like it's what the technology gives you mm -hmm. that impels somebody to, to adopt it. Yeah. And so, um, so I did that a lot and I, with Google cloud, we worked on, AI, ML, all of the work that happened at data centers. And then yeah. that's when I really got to see these massive data centers and yeah. what's going on inside them. And so um, I did a lot of really great work, but it was kind of anonymous work for yeah. them. My name is in none of those videos or anything. And they have a ton of views and they are some of my most prized work that yeah. I that I worked on. Um, and so I felt like what kind of legacy am I leaving behind if all of my work is kind yeah. of anonymous and I wanted to be able to have something that not necessarily to be famous, but for that. So my grandchildren know they can point mm -hmm. to, yeah, that was my grandma, you know, yeah. and that that's something that I really wanted to do my own thing. And I quit Google, actually quit Google three times, but that's a whole another story <laughs> and I'm not going to get into it. Um, but the last time I quit Google and I yeah. actually quit, I actually left, I quit and then I would resend it for different reasons. Yeah. Um, the last time I was like, that's it. I gotta go. And I need to do something that is as big. So the work that I was doing there was huge. We mm -hmm. were working with crews all over the world. I was yeah. working with a big budgets. So we were doing incredible things and, um, I couldn't step back from that. Um, so I decided, and I was an executive producer, but it's very different when you're an executive producer where all you have to do is send an email. Like I need yeah. the X amount of money and X crew and then they just send it to you um, versus doing your own biz dev, your own, yeah. you know, that's different. And also I didn't need to have my videos make any money because they just needed to be beautiful yeah. and people just needed to like them. Yeah. And the idea of, well, how valuable is it really? Am I going to measure it with a view? Mm -hmm. Am I going to measure it with money that that product makes? Like, how do we measure the value of, of, a, of, a, of a film piece? And so, yeah, I wanted to make my first movie. I figured I was getting too old to, to yeah. do my first one. It's like, you know, you're only going to be young and first time for so long. And I just wanted to get it out the door. Yeah. And then as a Bitcoiner, um, it sucked. So I noticed a huge uh, increase in just the bad reputation of Bitcoin mining. Yep. My friends being yeah. like, yeah, Bitcoin's great. But it's so bad for the environment. Mm -hmm. So terrible for the environment. It's wrecking the environment. Yeah. And I would hear this and... I didn't always have the patience to have that conversation about, well, actually, <laughs> da, 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 da. and then I'm like, and then I was like, but I don't even really know because I heard mining was good from the miners, you know, yeah. at, on a stage. So I also don't want to repeat, be the propaganda piece for something that I haven't seen firsthand. Yeah. And so I decided to just go and check out these places in person and talk mm -hmm. to the utilities in person and see if this was actually real. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And I decided I'm just going to launch into Bitcoin and Bitcoin was going up at the yep. time. And so I felt this is going to be a great time. It's going to be so easy for me to get funding. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to want me to interview them. It's going to be so easy. Yeah. And it was so hard, <laughs> but I'm happy I thought yeah. it was going to be easy because yeah. I don't know if I would have done it. I think yeah. had I known how hard it was going to be, I don't know if I would have continued. So yeah. I'm super happy that I was very ignorant of that. And then being able to, one of, one of the all the reasons I wanted to create a, a film that wasn't just, all right, we need this video for this conference that's going to go with this marketing campaign in three months. And then right yeah. after you're done with that, you have another one. So it's fast, 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 fast. You're in the village for two days. You shoot everything you need and then you're out. Yep. I wanted to take my time and working on this film when all everything was going down was so great because I got to see that transition of the industry yeah. changing yeah. and seeing who stayed who stayed mining, who didn't, 
who acquired who. Yeah. Like a lot all of these different, different faces things. two years later, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and people, it, it's, it's mining is so hard. That's what yeah. I, I, you know, if I think making a movie about mining is hard, I, I would just sympathize with all the miners that were mm -hmm. going through winter storms that wrecked their, their machines. I mean, it's, yeah, it's hard at every corner. Yeah. And so it, we, there were a lot of kindred spirits, you know, it was a lot of fighters Yeah. and, and it was awesome. I'm, I'm happy that I got to meet the, those, the people that survived through that Yeah. versus the people that maybe just got lucky or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, or, I mean, I don't mean not to degrade anybody, but I feel like the people that I met were yeah. the people that were willing to like roll up their sleeves and, yeah. and just, you know, make it go right. Luck is a big part of Bitcoin. Uh, okay. I've. I have a few thoughts. One is, did anyone get cut out because they didn't make it through the cycle in the film? No, okay. but we, I did cut out like 20 people. Yeah, got cut but, out people. That's yeah. how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> and then they get upset. They do. Yeah. They do. And that for me, I mean, I nobody paid to be in the film. Yeah. So there was no agreement mm -hmm. for that. Um, but it did hurt some yeah. people. But... Um, Ultimately, you know, Bitcoiners repeat themselves. Yeah. And yeah. I had to go for the best sounding soundbite. Yep. And for us, there are famous Bitcoiners. We're like, oh my God, so and so, so and so, so and so. But our, the public that I'm making this for have no idea who yeah. anybody is. They don't is. care. And they yeah. don't care. So they would much rather hear that soundbite well delivered yep. than somebody that's um, upset talking or or being or whatever just not not the best sound by not everybody's very eloquent yeah no it makes sense in the competitive world of bitcoin mining one name stands out clean spark america's bitcoin miner at clean spark efficiency isn't just a goal it's our standard our sophisticated facilities are built and led by expert teams who care about bitcoin and the communities we work in scale, we've mastered it. Our large-scale operations have set us apart in the industry as examples of community-oriented building. Our track record speaks for itself. We navigate the complexities of the new economy with precision and with skill, continuously achieving operational milestones. Curious about how we do it? We invite you to discover the story behind CleanSpark's success at cleanspark.com. Uh, going to the genesis of the story, you're interested in learning more about Bitcoin and finding this stuff out for yourself. How did that go into the funding realm initially pitching this? When you were talking to people and getting money, were you like, this is going to be kind of pro-Bitcoin? Or were you like, this is an open investigation and you have to sign up for whatever happens? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's scary. I mean, but I did say, <laughs> look, I'm a Bitcoin user. I'm yeah. a Bitcoiner in the sense that I'm a Bitcoin user. Yeah. I've been using Bitcoin. I think it's phenomenal technology. I mm -hmm. understand the technology. I've listened to the podcast. I've read the books. But it's my name on, on that. And yeah. if I go to South America, because Paraguay is where all these people are filming, yeah. and I hear that it's awful and terrible... I'm going to report that it's yeah. awful and terrible yeah. because I'm not, I, Bitcoin Inc. didn't hire me for this. So mm -hmm. ultimately, no, I'm going to present what I see. Mm -hmm. And some, all of my investors obviously were like, let's go. Let's yeah. do it. That's cool. But That's some cool of that them they did didn't. That. <laughs> yeah. Some people, they did they back out or they backed out and yeah. they were like, no. Yeah. No. And I understand. I mean, it was risky. And if you don't yeah. know me and you don't know my work and you don't, you know, mm -hmm. it's, there were, there's so, so many good things to fund in the Bitcoin space as well. Yeah. So there's, and it's, even though they're not films, we're all b raising from the same people yeah. and they are investing in wallets. They are investing in technology that's going to make Bitcoin more accessible there. Yeah. So it was I think it's tough to raise in the Bitcoin space, but I think that's good. Yeah. I think that it ultimately the the right technology and the right team behind yeah. making that technology work are then going to be the ones that get their technology out there. It's definitely hard to get funding, uh, especially for media stuff in the space, but there's a value in persistence. So I'm sure it's easier <laughs> to get checks now that you've been doing it for two, three years and 
previously. I'd hope. I'd hope. It is a little easier. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Well, and yesterday, or not yesterday, two days ago, we had over 500 people come to Let's the screening. Yeah. So those people gave me money yeah. to come. There you, you know? go. And that is, I mean, it's... The, the cheapest ticket was $21 to go see a documentary yeah. when there's like so many cool, fun, free parties. I mean, I, I was like floored that yeah. so many people would come out to support. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so the film is been debuted at the, what city was it in? Warsaw. Warsaw, I'm just going to pull in. Yeah. It's the yeah. country. Uh, Warsaw Film Festival, which you put together, right? No, no? the Bitcoin Film Festival in okay. Warsaw. Tell me about that because then I'm ignorant of it. So yeah. awesome. These yeah. guys are some of the most creative, coolest Bitcoiners you'll ever meet. Yeah. And they put together the Bitcoin Film Festival. It's not just Bitcoin films. So it's mm -hmm. Bitcoin values. So okay. they had a Menger film. They had um, several other kind of like freedom minded um, sovereign minded yeah. uh, films and that attracted a lot of really smart people mm -hmm. that were then asking about Bitcoin and what does that mean and everything. And we premiered on 420, 2024. Nice. So that nice was really work. cool. That was yeah. the day of the having in Poland. Yeah. So that was awesome. And I mean, I helped a little bit, but I don't want to, yeah. I'll take it back. I, I, to considering everything they did, yeah. I was just a supporter. Yeah. Cool. And so you put the film out there. What's it been like, the reception since, and what's sort of the, the plan going into the fall with the film? So we have, this screening in Nashville was our 10th screening. Mm -hmm. And we have screened in Berlin, Arnhem. Um, Bondo, one of the, the village in Malawi that mm -hmm. we recorded in, we we had a screening there. That's cool. We had like 400 people go. No way. Yeah, we had a lot of people go, so it must have been like the whole village. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool. And so we're doing all these special screenings, and these are the screenings where we're basically showing the Bitcoiners what the movie's about, Yeah. what the movie is. But it's not really a movie for Bitcoiners. It's a movie for the friend their friends and definitely, their family definitely. and new I picked people. that up while watching it like you can show this to anyone and they're gonna learn something new and then for bitcoiners like great that you love bitcoin but yeah it's it's for other people in the sense that you need to expose them to it and so i picked that up a lot when i was watching it yeah thank you yeah that was my intention i, I mean yeah. i made the film for my friends for yeah. my you know san francisco Mm -hmm. buddies that were telling me that Bitcoin is bad for the environment. Mm -hmm. And these aren't, these are smart people. These are, these are respected executives yeah. in their fields. They just haven't gone down the rabbit hole and they, you know, read the New York times or whatever. And that's the information that they have. And they don't feel like there's more to learn. Yeah. But the fact that this is a grid financing tool, yeah. they don't understand that part. And they don't understand how important, how vital that is, not just for us in the United States, but for the close to a billion people in the world that do not have access to electricity mm -hmm. and how that's going to change their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's watch some clips and then kind of go through them a little bit. So Sounds good. if you are listening to this, we are going to play the audio so you can hear it. Uh, and it was pretty interview heavy film. So like, I think it should work pretty well with this. Yes. And then if you're watching from Coindesk TV or YouTube, then you're in for a treat. The opportunities to electrify and monetize not just wasted hydro, but like literally waste, right? So the world's trash. I started mining Bitcoin in 2013. So I've been around almost a decade now. Mining Bitcoin is very energy intensive. It's your biggest cost. I'm a co-founder of Nodal Power. We saw the, the wasted energy opportunity at landfills. So that's what we do now is we develop power plants at landfills and mine Bitcoin at landfills where appropriate. The average American produces about five pounds of trash a day. So there's trash being collected everywhere. Uh, it goes to the landfill, gets dumped off. All that trash decomposes over time. Uh, that decomposition process creates methane gas. 
that methane gas is the stinky stuff that you're kind of smelling at the landfill that everyone's afraid of. Uh, and that landfill gas can actually combust. When you dispose of your garbage, put it in a can, garbage truck takes it to a, a landfill. Once that garbage gets to the landfill, it's typically put into a large hole or pit. That garbage is covered with kind of a membrane system. Okay, so the flared gas story is one that a lot of people are familiar with. This one adds the biomass spin on it with combusting any sort of gas that comes from a landfill. And this is the story that like we all love to use in Bitcoin mining because it points out like exactly the opposite. Like we do care about the environment so much that we're fixing it for people. Tell me about finding these stories, like sourcing them and then trying to make it palpable because it is still difficult to explain. People don't know, first of all, that there's like gas coming from a landfill, let alone that you can like run engines on it and then turn computers on top of that. I didn't but, know. Yeah. I didn't know. I, while I was doing the research for this, I wrote down all of the different case studies that I wanted to see myself. I felt anything that was mitigating methane mm -hmm. is something worth looking at. Um, and especially from a landfill, because yeah. at a landfill, there's no mechanism, many landfills, there are other landfills like the LA one does contribute to the grid. There mm -hmm. are landfills that do have the, the hardware to suck up the methane and clean it up and run the, the combustion yeah. the engine. Um, but I had never really understood it. And in terms of how to explain it and make it palpable, animation. Yeah. Animation for me is a t such a great and important tool because yeah. you're talking about these, you're talking about math, you're talking about chemistry, you're talking about whatever technical thing you're talking about. If you can, first you need to fully understand it yourself and then you need to create a storyboard that simplifies that. And I think that that's the value of the storyteller. A storyteller can look at the world and create a, a story that yeah. the rest of the world can 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 hear and identify with or yeah. relate to without needing to have the 10,000 hours or whatever that it yeah. takes to get there. And so animation is a great way of simplifying it so that even a child can understand. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, so that's how I made it palpable. And in terms of meeting the miners, I had a lot of Zoom calls with a lot of people. A lot of people. Um, I Anybody that would answer, I was like, yeah. I just need 10, 15 minutes of your time. And it was tough because it was, I was like, okay, I either want to interview them or raise money from them. <laughs> and that is such a, such it's a really hard. delicate conversation. <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause <laughs> it's I'm really like, hard. I'm not, it's not a pay to play. You don't know. Yeah. You don't pay me to be in it. I want to interview but I am raising money. So if you know of anybody, so yeah. I, I became really good at basically not raising money from the folks that I wanted to interview Yeah, because that was value enough for them yeah. to let us in, let us record, trust us yeah. to tell me their story. That is basically makes up the fabric of my movie. Yeah. So even though it's then I need money to film it and do it, but it's it's a delicate space um, that we need to that we need to you know yeah. navigate. Yeah, super delicate. I mean, I do that with podcasting. It's like the conflict of interest. You have a sponsor. Are they gonna like come on the show a lot? Are they gonna you gonna ask them tough questions when they do come on? Yeah. But this is media. Yeah. This is an independent media. So that's right. Um, okay, this is a cool scene. I also like just like the aesthetic of picking Utah, big blue open skies from a film perspective. You can really get a good feel for it. And again, that's a cool thing about Bitcoin mining, how tangible it is. And I think that's the value of a film like this where you get to show people, okay, it's not just Bitcoin, this internet thing out there. It's like Bitcoin is a landfill in Utah that's being used properly. Like that's Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This, so, so for Utah, for this uh, scene, I didn't fly out there to yeah. record. I hired a crew and then I was there via FaceTime and with uh, DJI, you can actually share your screen mm -hmm. with somebody else while you're flying. Oh, real? Okay. So there was, when, when I called them, they were setting everything up. Um, and they were like, we'll call you when we, when we have the drone up. And when they showed me it, the the shot, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like we're cooking. Wow, yeah. Yes, yeah. this is Cooking beautiful. with gas. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I could not believe that we were basically filming a, yeah. a, a dump. Yeah. 
I mean, it's a good looking dump. It's okay. a good looking dump. Yeah. We can go to our next clip. origin of the Bitcoin mining bull started with a particular Bitcoin data center that was on Seneca Lake in central New York. This particular plant had been a coal plant, but was retrofitted to then be a natural gas power plant. But the company also mined Bitcoin, again, to become more profitable. This particular power plant on Seneca Lake had been fought no matter what it was doing. It was fought way before it was even being used as a Bitcoin data center. Somebody needs to generate power for all of us. We understand that. However, we do not need to pollute this lake for Bitcoins. Residents here warned the power plant worsens climate change while threatening Seneca Lake, the region's economic driver. Burn more fossil fuels in the middle of climate change to make fake money? It's, it's ludicrous. Okay, so we just saw the Seneca Lake story, which I think even people who are right on that outside of Bitcoin mining layer, they're aware of it, but they're not normie. They know Seneca Lake. Those They know this headline. They know about like the boiling the ocean thing, boiling the lake. Um, seems like a very natural thing to put within a film about it. And I just love how it's just like point by point refuted here. You're like you tell the story and then you go through it. Uh, tell me a little bit about the, how you guys filmed this section though. Yeah. So um, I filmed Kyle in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and I knew that Foundry was operating in New York. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to know from him, like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, I had, again, read the mainstream. I had read the Bitcoin version. I wanted to. Yeah. And Kyle is a no BS kind of guy. So He's director of policy at Foundry, right? Yes, public policy, okay. if I'm not okay. mistaken. Just heard correct. Yeah. Um, and he will tell it like it is. He'll mm -hmm. tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. And like mm -hmm. he's, he's, and yeah, he's, he's really cool. And I was like, explain to me what's going on. Yeah. And one of the things that when I'm, when I'm interviewing people, mm -hmm. I ask them to explain to me the timeline, explain to me the thing, tell me the story, Yeah, you know? And that way they're telling me a story. It already sounds like a story when I put it in the film. It sounds like a story. I mean, yeah. It's a kind of like Jerry rig a story out of their words. And so he was able to kind of just tell me like the goss, like yeah. what's going on, break it down for me. And what's also great about Kyle is that he's very good and Troy is the same. They're good at dates. They're mm -hmm. good at names. They're good at exactly like yeah. they are Policy not. Policy people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are no generalizations <laughs> here. It's like this person said this and then this happened and then this person reacted this yeah. way. And so... Um, it was an interesting um, chapter to, to film because yeah. there's, again, I'm making this movie for people in kind of liberal, yeah. uh, coastal places like New York. And so it was important for me to to tell the story in a way that they didn't feel that everything that they heard for mm -hmm. people don't like to feel wrong. Yeah. They like to feel like they're learning more. Yeah. And then they decided to change yeah. their mind about it. Yeah. So another tightrope <laughs> I yeah. had to walk and it wasn't like, you're an idiot for following mainstream news. I mean, no, who, nobody yeah. wants to hear that. You, yeah. ne you need to, this is the information that was left out and you know, yeah. you decide after that. Going up there, do you film in New York or did you? Thank goodness Seneca yeah. Lake has a lot of stock yeah. video. And okay. it was important for me because we filmed so much. So like I actually yeah. know the percentage. We're like 90 something percent of the film we shot. Mm -hmm. So I had my drone. I would hire people with drones. So everything mm -hmm. is shot by us. But uh, Seneca Lake, I bet I was super tight budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, super like, oh my God. Yeah, it's uh, indie film. <laughs> yeah, Got it's to like, do it that there's way. no money. Yeah. But, um, but, and I also don't like stock photography, stock videos that look like stock video. Yeah. Um, so I was able to find a really good website that had in Seneca Lake is, mm -hmm. I did not know was so famous. Yeah. And so we were able to find a lot of stock footage around Seneca Lake and news footage. Mm -hmm. And there's also an animated scene in this one, in this, in this chapter as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so the film is a combination of me going to film at places, me hiring a crew and filming at the place, me hiring mm -hmm. a crew and me directing remotely. 
Um, and then we sprinkle in Seneca Lake is our heaviest uh, yeah. stock yeah. chapter. Yeah. No, thanks for the details on that, for like kind of lowering the screen. That's interesting. Okay, we'll go to our last clip here. We all plug our appliances and we plug our air conditioners and we plug our computers and our lights and our hospitals into an electricity grid. And that's the way it's worked for about 100 years, ever since Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla and Sam Insull kind of created the industry 100 odd years ago in the United States. was a good invention. It's widely heralded as being one of the most important inventions of the last 500 years. But we've outgrown it. Our collective demand for electricity has grown by orders of magnitude on a per capita basis since those early days where people just sort of wanted a light next to their, you know, their reading spot after the sun went down at night. But now, our whole civilization runs on electricity. And I think when you look at the history of the world, countries and communities that had affordable and reliable power have clearly a better standard of living, have more individual liberty, more prosperity, more opportunities. And so I think there's a lot of um, ideas that are being discussed that energy use is a bad thing. So we need to separate energy use from emissions. And really, more power is a great thing. And it is it comes from a place of privilege from people saying, we should use less power. We should have conserve energy. There's a whole host of stuff, heat pumps, other ways, being more efficient with our energy use. But, but just straight up consuming less power is, is just not grounded in reality. Energy waste is bad. Energy consumption is a very good thing. So it's not, we don't want less energy. We want more and cleaner energy and we want it in a system of, that, that provides abundance. So the reception, what was that for the energy part? We're coming up at the end here and talking about like how people are looking at your positioning for these things. I think this clip does a good job of laying out the energy grid story. How do you think that came across the audience so far from the 10 screenings you've done? I get from a lot of people that they learned a lot about electricity yeah. as well, watching the movie, and that they hadn't really considered that prosperity was tied to electricity consumption. Yeah. But it is, it, it's not something you have to convince somebody of. It's like you imagine mm -hmm. your life, yourself, how much electricity, can, like how much consumption do you have in order to get mm -hmm. the things done that you want to get done? And I mean, every time you do a Google search, that that consumes a ton of electricity. Every time you upload a picture on Instagram, that consumes a lot of electricity. And it continues to consume it even afterwards because it's still being stored somewhere. Yeah. You know, so these are these are things that we just know that we go to a light switch and we turn it on and it turns on. And it's the same amount of effort to turn on a huge air conditioner that's gonna consume a lot than mm -hmm. a lamp. You yeah. know, it's the same amount of effort for you, but the the pool that that has, but then imagine is different. But then imagine summers without having the AC. That yeah. sucks. I mean, yeah. I live in Puerto Rico. It's hot, and yeah. when we don't have the when we lose power two three times a week, instantly I am back in yeah. the dark ages. My, I tell need to tell my kids, don't open the refrigerator. I don't want our food to spoil. Yeah, you know, there's it's so easy to see that that our life right now is kind of dependent on yeah. electricity, especially here living in, in America and in the, in the United States. Um, there's a lot of places where that's not the case. And to demonize electricity consumption is, I just think it's ignorant yeah. because the reality is that we are where we are and we are as prosperous as we are because yeah. we have been able to learn how to transform that energy into another form of energy that then you can transform into another form of yep. energy. You know, like when you use electricity to make something and then you sell that thing, you have now transformed that energy. Yeah. So that that is a concept that 
um, I really wanted people to wrap their heads around whether, again, I didn't want to have people like leave the movie being like, I want to buy Bitcoin, which yeah. a lot of people do. <laughs> and a lot of people tell me like, I want to mine Bitcoin. I'm like, yes. But that wasn't my intention. My yeah. intention was like, just understand this because this is happening, whether you like it or not. Electricity consumption is a good thing. Yep. And let's stop let's stop this before it gets out of hand. This is not the right rhetoric. We need to talk about, yes, I love what Gideon says. Of course, we can be more efficient. Of course, there are better ways and more efficient mm -hmm. ways that ultimately doesn't waste as much energy in the process, of mm -hmm. course. And we should do those things as part of advancement. But mm -hmm. the idea that we need to consume less and that other countries need to, how we're, how we're telling other countries how they need to create and consume power when we built our country on whatever the heck we wanted mm -hmm. um, is 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 not it's not even human it's anti humanitarian it's anti human. I think the the cool stuff for me in this is just going back and seeing how the electrical grids work. That was big for me because I didn't understand any of this before Bitcoin mining, and then when you show it to a new person, they're like. Oh, the thing I took for granted every day, that's how this works. Uh, and there's like a little more humility about it as well. It's like, oh, okay, like people work in this industry, they have for you know, decades, they're doing their thing. I don't need to have such a big opinion about it. Yeah. Um, and so that's been a cool thing to, to kind of get from my side and then have it portrayed in film is a very powerful way of like distributing that idea to tons of people. Because uh, it matters a lot, you know? Like it, there's a lot of people who are pushing to like, and Bitcoin mining because they have a very poor understanding of how the grid works. Uh, the New York moratorium, probably should have said this during the Lake Seneca piece, but that's supposed to end in November or so. Um, mm -hmm. It was a uh, two-year? Yeah, two-year. Two I'm yeah. sure it's going to be re-up though, right? And it's probably just going to be re-up because there's not a lot of thought or education around these things. So I think the place I wanted to end on, unless there's more on this electrical grid part, is just like what's – the purpose of this education or what's the um, what's the lasting impression you want people to have around this sort of stuff and the, how can people kind of help share your, like, your vision and what can you ask for people to do on like your behalf to get this like distributed more or out there more? Bitcoin does not have a public relations team, mm -hmm. does not have a marketing team, it does not have a legal team and you have a lot of passionate Bitcoiners and you have Bitcoin companies, but they mm -hmm. don't have that kind of budget to, yeah. to lobby the way that Google can or Amazon can. So I felt compelled to work on it because I felt that, well, I have been trained by those companies. I know how to do what we did there. Yeah. And I can do that for Bitcoin so that we can protect it so that we can protect the conversation that even happens around it so that it continues to stay intellectually honest. Mm -hmm. You know, not protected in the sense of like, oh, it's good, don't talk about it again. It's, let's protect the conversation. Let's yeah. protect the the continuous looking at what this what this is in a non-vilified, non-boogeyman way. Yep. It is what it is. It's just computers that are plugged in and, you know, and blah, 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 blah. But it's so important that this conversation is is done correctly because we are moving into a future where the the physical footprint of our digital lives just continues to grow. I don't want I don't know if exponentially is the right word in this case, but very very rapidly. Yeah. And so I do believe that it's important for people to have this information and there are 50 something experts in the film. Mm -hmm. And somebody it gave me a bad review for the movie because I did not say that Bitcoin is volatile and people shouldn't invest in it. <laughs> uh, and I did not say other things. He was upset yeah. about the things I didn't say. Yeah. And then he said that I, I didn't portray each side equally. Huh. And for me, what I found was, let's say you have a group of 100 people and 98 of those people love the thing. Yeah. They love the thing. They love the thing so much. And there's two that don't love the thing. They yeah. hate the thing. Yeah. Are you going to give 50% screen time mm -hmm. to the two? That's not equal. Yeah. That's not correct. And people think that the, it's funny because within the movie, and I'm sure you know, as you know, a lot of Bitcoiners, there's actually a lot of Bitcoiners that disagree on a bunch of stuff in the movie. 100%. So there's a lot yeah. of disagreement. There is actually a lot of voices in the, in the space, in the movie represented. And 
we do have Alex Divery in the film, so we do give space to to mm-hmm. the opposition to say why it is that they're concerned about the electrical use. But to I wasn't going to make a movie that was. 50% good, 50% bad, because it's not 50% good yeah. and 50% bad. You have a small minority of 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 stories. Yeah. And the New York Times is doing a really good job at just featuring yeah. those. <laughs> so, the biggest canon out there is yeah. so pick those, the opposite standpoint. So. Those two people have already the biggest megaphone that they can ever want. Yep. So I and I did include some of those people in the film. So I think that it, it's an important thing to know that um, this is happening. And in terms of the movie, um, we are going to be in theaters October 31st, select theaters. And my goal is 2,000 screens. Mm-hmm. And I want as many people to go. And I encourage them to go and have a meetup after, yeah. go grab a beer after, make it an event, yeah. bring your friends and family, bring the crypto community out. Mm-hmm. Let's all come and learn more about Bitcoin mining. Yeah, Is that something that even like my crypto friends, they'll be like, well, this chain is so much more yeah. energy efficient. It's yeah. so much greener. And I'm like, all right, but every Bitcoin <laughs> transaction pays for electrical infrastructure all over the world. Yeah, yeah. So by you saying that it's green or you're saying that you're not paying for electrical or whatever, yeah. I don't not necessarily. I take I take those words back, podcast world. But yeah. I mean that by consuming less, you think that's better. Yeah. But that's yeah. not necessarily better. It's much more nuanced. It's sad that you have friends who still believe that. That's all I'll say. And there's just so many. Well, you know, people that I know. How about that? (laughs) People that I know. People that are in my space. And, you know, and and it's why I made the movie. It's because, okay, well, you're here. You are like so many people. I would tell them I'm working on Dirty Coin, a documentary on Bitcoin mining. I'm so happy you're doing that because it's so bad for the environment. People need to know. See, that's why the name was so great. (laughs) Because it got the right people. It's a Trojan horse was the name. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say I would encourage people to to go out and see it on October 31st. Um, if they want to screen it themselves, I'm also licensing it for yeah. for people to screen it um, at their homes, at their mm-hmm. uh, convention centers or whatever. So the people can contact me if they would like to screen it. But it's really, I just did a, a I created something for the industry. All industries, HPC, and yeah. energy. Like I created this. This is what is occurring. This is boiling down four years of mm-hmm. research into 69 minutes. Yep. And there is so much more to know. And I hope that this just really, again, legitimizes the conversation yeah. so that when an electrical engineer or somebody wants to talk to their boss about, hey, let's consider Bitcoin mining, they're not like Bitcoin. No. Yeah. I don't even want to talk about it. You said the B word. No. And no, we need to we need to really look at this seriously. And the countries that are are getting mm-hmm. ahead. Yep. Very much ahead. Yeah. So I think we're at a point now where it's not just um, enough years have gone by mm-hmm. where these case studies have matured. And we see the example of Paraguay. And we see the example of El Salvador. We see what's going on in Kenya. We see yeah. what's going on in Malawi. And yeah, I mean, if if you don't get it, then you're just going to be left behind. Yeah. And so I do want to encourage a lot of people to come, have honest conversations about it, and and watch the movie and share it with their friends and pick it apart. Yeah. Have fun picking it apart. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Have the conversation. That was a very Bitcoiner ask right there. Pick <laughs> apart my argument. I love that. Um, okay. Any last thoughts before we close out? I just wanted to, to thank you. you and- Oh, yeah, you can yeah. follow me. Twitter and LinkedIn are my two yeah. uh, vices from the social media perspective. LinkedIn um, is a vice, huh? Interesting. Yeah, maybe vice is not the right word. Yeah. Um, you can walk crutch. that back as well. That's good. It's <laughs> a lot of walking back. <laughs> just two things. Just two things. But the LinkedIn one, I have to I have to call that out. Well, I do. So because of BizDev, yeah. um, LinkedIn is, is that. the best for BizDev. And I yeah. find that I have like the most... Um, maybe like the most mature conversations yeah. and common flows, then sometimes Twitter people can be a little like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> off the which cuff. is fun. Um, and I'm okay with that, but I yeah. feel like LinkedIn, uh, because it's so public and people are like looking for work on there, yeah. people need to behave a little bit better. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm one of those uh, LinkedIn users. That's okay. That's okay. Cool. <laughs> but I wanted to thank you and I wanted yeah. to thank the, you for the work that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Your podcast was one of the podcasts that I was listening to when I was Good. doing research. Yeah. And um, I went to see you at Consensus as well. Mm-hmm. And I remember you were in a table with two or three other uh, 
crypto folks mm-hmm. and and you were like the i didn't know you i think that was the first time i saw you and yeah. you were like the bitcoiner and yeah. i was like whoa that yeah. guy's really ballsy he's here at consensus <laughs> yeah he's talking about i still crypto. playing that role with them i'm telling yeah. you what I'm, I'm trying with them but but well yeah. done i yeah. mean to to be that person it's it's tough yeah. to um, to be the bitcoiner sometimes with not tough because you have like truth behind the energy you, right? is on your side <laughs> energy yeah. is on your side but yeah. it is you know to have to a uh, be eloquent about your position, yeah. But but maintaining the friendship and 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 being able to you uh, communicate, not yeah. just um, you know. I think you do that very well. Thank so you. Thank, thank you. you for doing that for yeah. the space. Well, thanks for coming on the show. And yeah, I think people need to come watch us. Um, I watched it. I loved it. And I'm looking forward to watching it again at a screening soon. So you'll we'll love put it on the, the show big notes. screen. Yeah, it's gonna. I'll watch it on the laptop, which is kind of a cardinal sin, and I should know not to do that. It's <laughs> like someone who's trying to get into film more, but yeah, but awesome. It Thanks for your time is. today. Thank you, Will.